Good people of YouTube, I'm the Watch Idiot, and the question of the day is which black bait is the best? And like all things in the watch world, the answer isn't so simple because while the Black Bay 54, Black Bay 58, and the new Black Bay 41 monochrome are pretty similar, they are actually quite different in real life, which is where 80 to 85% of us are gonna be wearing these. So in this video, I'm gonna get into their dimensions and their on the wrist experiences to see how different they are. And also I'll get into what makes each watch special. And finally, I'll try to decide which one I would choose between these three. So let's just get into it. We'll start with the dimensions because that's what I always do, but also because the size differences between these three watches will be a big factor for many folks out there, aside from all the other differences that I'll get into in the later sections. So, real quick, on paper you see that the Black Bay 54 is 37 millimeters and the Black Bay 58 is 39 millimeters and the Black Bay 41 is obviously 40.6 millimeters at its widest point and I thought that the size difference between each watch would stay the same between each watch, but that isn't the case really for any of these watches. The Black Bay 54 does indeed look and wear smaller than the Black Bay 58. However, when I saw the Black Bay 54 on my wrist after having owned the Black Bay 58 Blue, it really didn't feel like what I would think a 37 millimeter watch would wear like, mainly because of the 20 millimeter bracelet and the wider lug stance, which I love. It really wears like a smaller Black Bay 58 as opposed to a 37 millimeter Black Bay. So when I got the Black Bay 41, I thought it was gonna be the same difference, but the Black Bay 41 actually barely looks bigger than the Black Bay 58 side by side and on the wrist as well, which was a nice surprise. If anything, the Black Bay 41 now feels like it's a Black Bay 58 Pro of sorts, since it is a touch bigger in terms of size visually when you see it on the wrist, but it does have more mass and it does feel a bit beefier and the proportions of the dial versus the Black Bay 58 make the indices more prominent, almost like a slightly maxi version of the Black Bay 58 and the Black Bay 54 for that matter. And this is something I only noticed now, but I knew that the Black Bay 41 bezel grip has more pronounced teeth than the Black Bay 58 and the Black Bay 54, but it actually extends beyond the case, whereas the bezels on the other two don't extend beyond the case. And that plays into the dial and then consequently the watch wearing and looking a bit smaller and it also helps the Black Bay 41 wear more like a pro version. And onto the Black Bay 41 monochrome and I'm so glad that Tudor made this watch because despite having so many versions of the Black Bay concept, they never released the simplest design which is just a clean black dial, crisp white indices and a black bezel with civil markings. Every version had some sort of flourish and to be clear, I liked a lot of these flourishes whether it's a different bezel color or a dial color but when they get heavy handed with some of the gilt accents, it just gets a bit much. So in a weird way, the Black Bay 41 monochrome's simplicity is its uniqueness. And it's this clean look that appeals to me so much when compared to the blue dial and blue bezel of the Black Bay 58. And actually, even if there was a Black Bay 58 monochrome, I would still choose this Black Bay 41 because to me, the details of the Black Bay 41 level it up over the Black Bay 58, such as the more pronounced teeth on the bezel grip and crown. And visually also for those two things, they're much more useful. And that's awesome. Oh, and speaking of the bezel, every Tudor diver that I've used has had the best bezel clicks on the market short of a Submariner. And that goes for all three watches here. So whatever you get, you're gonna get an awesome bezel. And now a hot take here, but the proportions of the Black Bay 41 are far better than the proportions of the Black Bay 58, which has very good proportions, no doubt. It's hard to fault it, but it was only after seeing the Black Bay 41 next to the Black Bay 58 that I realized, you know, how much more I like this slightly tighter dial and the more maxi indices and the overall touch of extra visual heft. But let I me mean, just, just a little touch. Oh, and then also this is Meta certified, which is a big plus point for me. And if you want more details on that, just check out my previous video. I have it linked up in one of these two areas over here. But overall, if I had to choose one of these three watches in a vacuum, it would be the Black Bay 41 Monochrome for all the reasons I just said. It hits the marks in so many ways. It's classic, and yet it can be transformed into a modern tool dive watch. 
Now on to the smallest of the three watches, the Black Bay 54, and this is by far the most unique of the three as well. Uh, first, because it's 37 millimeters, but also due to the overall look and feel. Like I said, in the dimensions and on the wrist section, even though it's a 37 millimeter watch, which sounds really, really tiny, it really only wears like a small Black Bay 58 versus a 37 millimeter Black Bay. It overall feels bigger than 37 millimeters, and that's due to the same things that make it unique. Since it's 37 millimeters wide and it keeps a 20 millimeter bracelet this makes the lugs look wider compared to the case size which gives the watch like a little bit of a wider stance on the wrist and i absolutely love these proportions and how different it looks compared to the more tapered wrist presence of 39 plus millimeter watches with a 20 millimeter lug width it's just a nice change of pace and a different experience and that's what i want for my watches in the end but as for the watch itself it gets pretty much everything else right because it's staying true to the tudor 7922 which is from you guessed it, 1954. It has a gilt dial, which is more subdued than I was expecting, thankfully. And it's got a unique bezel layout with alternating dashes and numerals, which isn't seen anymore, hence making it unique. But the critical point here is that the bezel markings are silver. And that's important to me because I didn't like, and I still don't like the gilt bezel of the black Black Bay 58 at all. It just feels too intense to me. Whereas the Black Bay 54 looks much more measured. And in many lights, it looks like just a clean monochromatic Bad watch and I hope the word monochromatic sounds a bit familiar. So to answer the realistic question of which watch I would choose between these three to keep in my current collection, it would be this Black Bay 54. As much as I love the Black Bay 41 monochrome because in my diver heavy collection with many, many tool dive watches, the Black Bay 54 just offers a unique experience that really no other watch offers. I mean, how many 37 millimeter divers are out there at all, right? And now onto the Black Bay 58, and this particular Black Bay 58 Blue is my cousin's because I sold mine about a year, year and a half ago. But just for some context, and to be fair, it's not because it was a bad watch, because it's a great watch. It just didn't work for me in my collection. So I'm just not really a blue dial guy, amongst other things, other universal things that I'll get into over here. So when the Black Bay 58 Blue came out, it was exciting because it was a modern looking Black Bay that wasn't fully vintage, which sounds familiar again, like the Black Bay 41 monochrome, but it was done with a blue dial and bezel, which looked great because it wasn't as bright and saturated as the Pelagos blue dial, which works in its own way. And also it wasn't very muted, which would have been a bit ugh. Also, I should note that this has the Snowflake second hand, whereas the Black Bay 54 and the Black Bay 41 have Lollipop second hands. I like both, but I do know that people have very, very strong opinions about the Snowflake hand. So, just something to note. In the end, I liked seeing it on my wrist and a big part of that was the proportions. It just felt right. The Black Bay 41 now feels more right, but the Black Bay 58 was and still is very right, especially for a 39 millimeter watch with 20 millimeter lugs. It just looks really great. And also it looks really great on a bunch of straps. But then that leads me to the main issue beyond me not really being a blue dial guy, but that's the bracelet, more specifically the clasp because the bracelet itself feels great on the wrist. No complaints about that, which to me is very important overall comfort of a bracelet. But yes, it does have fake rivets as do all three link, Black Bay bracelets, but I don't mind them at all really. And if it does bother you, maybe then think about the Black Bay 41 on the five link bracelet and, or maybe actually just get a third party bracelet because there are a bunch of them out there, really good ones. But the fatal problem for me was that I just couldn't get the bracelet to fit right on my wrist. I needed either a extra half link or I need some extra micro adjust holes. Oh, and it doesn't have any sort of quick adjust class, but when I got it, it was also the days before the T-Fit class. So you know, just to be fair. And also just to be fair, uh, Uncle Straps now has a half link for the Black 58 and the Black 54. And Steel Reef makes a quick extension for the bracelet, but we still don't have a T-Fit clasp from the factory for the Black 58s. And uh, yeah, hopefully next year, you know, three years after the T-Fit clasp was made, I don't know why, it takes so long just to update that part on it. So yeah, if you're looking for a Black Bay 58, know that you have many ways to get around these bracelet issues. But also, if you are patient, maybe then just wait for the T-Fit class version. But uh, again, who knows when that's actually gonna come. So there you have it. Let me know which one you would choose down in the comments. And until the next video, good day.